Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I wanted to introduce you to a new module that I published in kind of the same vein that the Azure Region Lookup module was in. I got this idea because I've been getting some pretty great feedback about the Azure Regions module since I launched that video where I showed you how to use it with the new input variable uh, validation feature of Terraform 1.9. And Brendan Clove, 8717, says that's pretty cool. You should also do something similar with VM SKUs. For example, validating the SKU is available in the region you want to use. Validating the SKU meets CPU and memory requirements. Validating there is sufficient capacity within the region slash availability zone to deploy the SKU. I thought, been there, have totally experienced that pain. Um, you know, even, even folks that have been using the cloud for a long time, there's a lot of SKUs, right? And you know, for the, even the trained eye, the kind of avalanche of random consonants and vowels can be a little bit uh, disarming. <laughs> Just full disclosure, like I have to go look up. And honestly, I've been, I, you know, I, I, I'm also using ChatGPT to look up uh, SKUs now these days too, which is a helpful tool. However, Brendan Clove has this great idea here. We could do the same thing. We could validate. We could uh, create a module that allows us to filter based on resource requirements. Not only will it help us figure out what SKUs are going to meet our requirements, but it'll also allow us to validate our inputs to make sure that we're getting what we want. So I wrote this module. I had to, I had to do a little bit of research um, into how to get the AZ API provider to do what Brendan Clove suggested, but um, I think I got something worked out. Before we drop into code, I just want to remind you to please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot and consider channel membership. It helps me do what I do and uh, it really supports the channel and me quite a lot. So if you choose to support me in that way, I greatly appreciate it. Um, you will get a shout out on my channel in an upcoming episode and the Code Ninja membership level uh, grants you exclusive access to my code reviews. So you open a pull request on GitHub and invite me to review your code. DM me on Discord and I'll go review your code. It's a great way to get another pair of eyes looking at your cloud infrastructure, your cloud architecture, and your Terraform code. Anyways, without further ado, let's drop into this module and take a peek at what I'm doing. So this module, I mean, basically focuses around, you know, similar, similar AZ API resource called the Resource Action which allows you to invoke um, different Azure REST APIs. You just need to know how to do it, right? Um, now, the data source is used, of course, when we do reads. So the HTTP method is going to be a get. Um, I believe that when you use resources, you're going to use like puts and posts. Um, and those are like when you're like when you want to do an action, like restart a VM that's actually like a, a post function or something like that. Um, but in this case, I'm just trying to get information from Azure. Um, so all I, I'm using the data source, um, and that's pretty much it. Now, I had to do my own research, and I had to go look up the REST API specification for Azure to figure out how to do this. And it was a bit tricky trying to figure out how to massage the REST API call into this um, resource action uh, data source. But ultimately, I got it working. So... Basically, you know, the type is going to be the resource type at the version. Both of those are required. So you, you need both of those things in there. Um, the resource ID is going to be basically the root path of the REST API. Um, and then the action is going to be um, the, the final segment of that path, right? So in this case, I'm hitting my subscription, which I'm getting off of the current, con um, the current client configuration slash provider slash compute. And then on that endpoint, I'm hitting this REST API called SKUs. Uh, and I'm, I'm also adding a filter. If you don't add this filter, and it's a little, it's a little bit janky, right? But basically I'm doing location, uh, special character for space equals special character for space. You know, that, uh, if, if you, if you know a better way to URL encode in Terraform, I would love to do it. I don't normally do URL encoding. A lot of times I do JSON and YAML encoding um, or Base64 encoding, but um, URL encoding was kind of a first for me. Didn't really find a good solution. Let me know in the comments below if you have a good solution for that. I'd be curious to know because 
it does feel a bit janky, you know, putting in, um, you know, the, the Unicode supported characters for special characters and stuff like that. It's not super readable. Um, and then a location. Now, if you don't add this filter, it's going to come back with every SKU for every region, which sounds awesome, right? But that's a lot of data. And, and you'll understand why when we look at the data structure that actually comes back, because I'm, I'm parsing um, a, a lot of this data. Um, and I, I, right now, I'm really only using a subsection of it. Um, so there's a lot of things that I could do with it. Um, but I'm only using a subsection of it right now. And right now, I'm, I'm just exporting all the values just because I wasn't sure how much data I, I needed uh, for this thing. Um, and so just like in my other module, I, I, you know, this, this is enough, you know, for my brain to process. So, um, you know, I'm, this is, I'm just leaving this alone in here. Um, this is setting up the data source. Now I'm going to query that data source in new and interesting ways. And there are, when you, when you, when you query the, the SKUs for Microsoft.compute, there are many, it's not a homogenous set of SKUs that come back. There are SKUs for different resource types. Um, most notably, uh, there are SKUs that are related to disks. Um, and then there are SKUs that are related to, wait for it, virtual machines, which is, you know, what you would expect. Now, I decided not to just throw away the disk SKUs because I thought there might be some interesting use cases where we could jam you know, the supported disk SKUs with the supported VM SKUs, you know, cause those are very common problems that I, you know, have to go consult the documentation for to, to make sure that the virtual machine SKU that I'm using is actually compatible with the disk SKU that I'm using and vice versa. So, um, I thought I, I'll, what the, Hey, I'll just throw it in there and I, I won't necessarily use it right off the bat, but I'll have the data if I ever want to use it. Okay. And so just like in my other, uh, module, I'm, I'm doing kind of a two-step process where I process the raw data directly from the data sources output. Um, and then I just transform it into a structure of my own design. Now, in this case, um, I'm going to have the name, the resource type, the tier, the size, and then basically a key value pair of capabilities. Um, and you'll, these capabilities are largely going to be numeric, but not necessarily the case. So you can see here, I eventually do another transformation. I eventually do another transformation where I, I parse the, that capabilities, uh, map and I, and I kind of spearfish the values that I want out of it. And I save them into structures of, of my own choosing, um, to make it a bit more easier to use. Um, when, when I start, uh, outputting this, I, I don't want to have that huge map everywhere. Right. And I want to have uh, type, you know, strongly typed data, data, data attributes. Um, so if it's a number, I want it to be a number. If it's a bool, I want it to be a bool. Um, so that I don't have to do type conversion after the fact. Um, so I, I'm, I actually may not actually be doing type conversion here. So I might, I might need to check that. Um, but, uh, down here with virtual, you can see with virtual machines, there's quite a lot, um, in that capabilities array. Right. Um, and yeah, I am doing type conversion. So I probably, I probably do need to do a type conversion um, on the disks, but remember the disks are not super high priority for me. It's all about the SKUs. And so with the, you know, with the virtual machine, it's all about the virtual machine SKUs. So now with virtual machine, I'm doing almost exactly the same thing, except I'm just filtering by the virtual machines resource type. Um, and I'm constructing pretty much the exact same data structure, um, transforming that output um, into something a little bit more easily accessible by me later. And then I, I did capture one example and I, I stored it here in the code just so that I could use it as a reference so that when I started spearfishing out of this capabilities map, I, I, I you know, knew what I was going after and I knew what type it was going to be. And so you can see here, I've the, the structure for the virtual machine SKUs are a bit more complex than the disks, right? I, I, I have a complex object called resources 
which is where I put in all the counts for the you know virtual CPUs, the memory, GPUs, disk, and NIC counts. And then I have this other section called features, which is for all those basically mostly just a, ba a bag of flags, Boolean flags that say whether or not something is supported or not. So accelerated networking is a is a one that I often use. Um, and maybe you use like low priority or encryption at host, um, and you want to make sure that the SKUs that you're using support those features because they're important to you. So I've, I've added those in there. You can use them to your heart's content, but I, but I didn't necessarily create an example for every single one of these. Now, the last step in this data transformation process is where I actually apply the filters. And so you can see here, um, I'm keying off of a, a couple of input variables, min and max CPU, and then min and max memory gigabyte. And this is what's going to allow me to kind of filter down the SKUs that return uh, based on these input parameters. Um, and so, you know, here we go, you know, but the default is something obscenely large. Um, and the, the default for max is something obscenely, obscenely large. And the default for min is zero, right? I think that makes sense. So basically, if you don't specify the max, it'll be obscenely large. It's going to catch everything. If you don't set the min, it's going to be obscenely small, zero, <laughs> and it'll catch everything, like no problem. Um, and then, of course, we have the location, which is absolutely required. So pretty much all of the, you know, all of these are optional except for the location. And I want you, again, to think about the location so I do not specify a default. All disks skew, which just returns all that data. And then I return an all VM SKU and then uh, a matching VM SKU. Now, the reason why I filtered down to the SKU name is because I intend that these output parameters should be easily usable by folks that are trying to use the input variable validation, right? So you want to be able to do, here's my SKU, is it contained in this collection? That's all that you want to do, right? Now, I should probably add some outputs to let you get at the, you know, all that, you know, beautiful data that, uh, that I pull off of the, uh, pull, pull off of the API. Um, but just, just as a demo, this is version one, version, you know, 1.1 will probably have, you know, all that uh, other outputs that let you have access to that data. If you just want to make sure that the SKU is available within the region, then you use this output and you, in your input variable validation, you would say, Hey, does my SKU can is my SKU contained in all VM all VM SKUs, right? And the fact that you've already specified the location to this module, um, you're already filtering it down to that location, so you can feel confident of that. Now, you can also say, um, does my SKU is my SKU contained in the matching VM SKUs? And this is basically going to look at those matching criteria that you pass in, which right now I only support, support CPU and memory as uh, recommended by Brendan Clove. Um, but of course, I could add additional filters that are optional for all so every single one of those features, accelerated networking, uh, low priority VMs, uh, encryption at host, etc. cetera. Um, and all I'd have to do is just continue to add these kind of optional uh, filter parameters um, and then add additional input variables. But I took a crack at it just to demonstrate how this is going to work. So there you go. So let's go look at one of these demos. So let's go to match VM SKU. And I'll just run Terraform apply. And if I go look at this, what am I doing? Um, I'm, I'm looking for exactly four CPUs and at least eight gigs of RAM. So um, I'm instantiating the module. Now remember, I'm using the double backslash to get up to the root folder. Um, it's kind of janky, but this is, this is how things are done when you have a single module repo. And there's my SKUs. I have all those SKUs. Now if I want to change this and I want to expand it, I want, let's say I want to look now. Notice these are all Echo 4, Foxtrot 4, NC4, 444, Delta 4. Um, they all have four, pretty much four. I'm not sure why D3 is showing up like that. It's kind of funny. Now, if I want to change this to like 16 vCPUs, and now the RAM, I think the, the RAM's a minimum, so it should be okay. Let's rerun apply and see what happens. 
And notice that it's going to come back with Foxtrot 16, Echo 16, um, interesting Del DS 14, Delta 16. So it's going to it's going to be coming back with you know 16 CPUs, right? That's that's the goal. Now, if you don't want to do the filtering and you just want to verify that the SKU is within the region, then again, you don't have to pass in any input variables at all. It's going to return everything under the sun. So all you do is declare this module, set the location, you know, for the region that you want, and voila, you know, it will return back all the SKUs that are available within that region. Um, and you can, you can reference it just by, actually, it looks like that. This is incorrect. Let me go to VM SKUs. Yeah, I, I guess I refactored the module. So it's no longer just VMs. It is all VM SKUs. Fixing bugs on the fly. <laughs> Voila. So I should probably just do some testing of all my uh, examples here. Now, this is, I, I included a module registry example to show you how to actually reference this from the module. Uh, reg the official module registry. So you can see I'm no longer using the double backs, the double dot dot backslash. Um, I'm actually referencing my module uh, registry um, entry profile, um, compute SKUs and Azure RM. So this should work for you. I'm probably going to have to push an incremental version, um, you know, to fix that example. But of course the examples, you know, really only matter when you pull down the code yourself anyway. So let's go check out the disk SKUs, make sure that that is working as well. Might have a similar problem. No, that one's all disk SKUs. So I think we're good there. There, and you can kind of see the data that comes back for the disk SKUs. Um, min, max, disk size. So if you really wanted to go nuts with input variable validation, um, some of the common input parameters to set up virtual machines are, of course, region or the location, um, the virtual machine CPU and memory resource attributes, the OS disk and data disk, as well as size and storage profile for those disks. So um, some virtual machine SKUs only support certain size disks or certain disk SKUs. So you have to be careful with that. In a future version of this module, I'm probably gonna look into how to make that more like easier to validate when you're trying to set up a virtual machine um, using a number of these different attributes. If you have input on that or ideas about that, please drop that in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your ideas. Um, anyways, that's it for today. Um, I hope you guys like this module. I think it's pretty useful and it's uh, yet another really cool application of the AZ API provider. Um, and something again, that once we get, um, provider specific functions built into the Azure RM provider. These would be excellent use cases to build in as provider specific functions to go look this stuff up. And when we do that, we can do all, we, we have the full access to Golang at that point. We can do local caching, right? And we don't have to do, deal with kind of the weird idiosyncrasies of the local provider. So I think we can, we can improve performance by introducing caching once we start implementing this as provider specific functions, but the AZ API provider is a great way to prototype these ideas out, um, see what's available while we wait for provider specific functions to make it into our beloved Azure RM. Anyways, that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer signing off.